Men pay attention to how you respect other women. You can show you can show them whether you're vulnerable. You can show them whether you're jealous just in your actions. They watch. And they are very, very attentive. Now, men say that was a bad outfit, but a sister know what kind of shoes it was, how long the heel was, how they what the hair was, and who made it, and they'll be bam, bam, bam in the makeup. And I'm saying, oh, oh, I just said the outfit, but you don't know the, 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 the gear to go with it. I know that was so and so and so. And, and, and it's so awesome how they pay attention to detail. Well, you have some men that pay attention to detail. Now, Naomi, hear me good. Naomi was not looking for anybody. But Naomi knew that she had a relative. So she put her in position to be empowered. I want to ask you something. Who you got in your life that's pushing you in the position to empower? Many times you're unable to empower yourself. So you need a mentor. You need someone who can push you into a position of power. Who can change your perception. Change the way you view yourself. So she has Naomi there. I'm almost home now. And Naomi begins to minister to her and she tells her how she has to carry herself. See, that's what I'm doing right now. I feel spiritual Naomi. I'm trying to tell you how you gotta carry yourself because she knows what's getting ready to take place. She knows that this is harvest time and they're gonna go down by the threshing floor and get drunk, but he's not looking for any kind of woman. He's looking for a particular kind of woman. Are you here is what I'm saying? Look at your neighbor and say, are you colonel or particular? Yeah, 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 yeah. A particular woman knows what she wants. A colonel woman accepts anything she can get. Uh, you know, right along. And so, so you have to be, you have to be different. Now look at your neighbor, put him and tell him I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate. I, I can't put up with it. See, after you come through certain things, you just can't put up with anything anymore. After you went through certain kinds of trouble, certain kinds of pain, certain kinds of hurt, you can't just put up with anything. You have to have a specific type in your own oh God, in the reference of your heart. You have to make sure. Listen, I'm not selling for anything less. I've already been through. I've already suffered. I've already been been beat down. I've already been abused verbally, spiritually. Y'all don't want me to preach like that. Physically, I'm not accepting anything. Because in my spirit, I recognize that my season for change is upon me. It's upon me, God. I don't know because last month I owe everybody and this month I don't owe nobody. My, my change is coming. Last month I didn't have no peace. This month I'm full of peace. Y'all don't hear me. Last month my joy was I was struggling. The last full of joy. Ain't nobody saying. The last week you might have been contented and almost homeless, but now you got a house. You ought to shout. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You was walking the black and white. You already see it. All of us sit on the side. A sign here and a sign there. Sign here and a sign there. Pointing to, pointing to something different. Look at your neighbor and say something different. Uh, something different. Uh, I gotta go home now. As we move down into the 22nd verse, God made sure that they brought back in the right time. And she realizes that she has a responsibility to take care of the woman of God. But while she's taking care of the woman of God, God is building up a reward for her. Look at your neighbor and say, you get ready to get your stuff now. You get ready to get your stuff. See, while you blessing somebody else, somebody else has been commanded by God to bless you. That's why if you see somebody in need, don't you turn your little nose up and act like they should. Oh, it's significant. You better help somebody. Look at somebody. Say, help somebody. I want to help somebody. Don't need to help you. And they don't hear me preaching in here today. But as we get ready to close, the Bible says that she said they're going to have a party down there by the threshing floor. He had already started giving you double favor. First, you was bringing a little bit of grain home. Now, you're bringing double that. Right. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for double. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, make room for double. Make room yeah. for double. Yeah. You already done had the trouble. You don't need trouble anymore. You, you need to make room for double. Yeah. Now, 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 as you get ready to embrace double, watch this here. When you embrace double, it still cannot change your attitude. You still have to have a meek and a humble attitude, even though God blessing you, even though God changing you. Don't get up in the end of your spirit now. Don't get all of that right now. You still have to stay lonely and meek, and you still have to be grateful 
for what God is doing in your life. Because after all, God's no respect of person. If he bless me, he'll bless you. Push your neighbor and say, if he bless me, he'll bless you. The fact that I'm going to go ahead and tell him, I'm going to lose it now because he's blessing me right now. Right now, blessing me. Right now, blessing me to be here. I got to go home and talk to you, so, 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 watch this. So she goes down, but she said, carry yourself in a place of respect. Be a, watch this. Be a, a celibate woman. Don't be loose. Come on, man. See, you can't be loose when you're looking for somebody to spend a lifetime with. All right. All right. Come on, that's it. You can't fill a lifetime with loose people. Come on. Cause they get tired. My God. That's what happened. For a season, y'all all right. Okay. And I know, I know folks don't like me to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. We had folks. Me and my wife was a part of another ministry. We had folks we used to sit on that on that uh, board. We ministered to people who were about to get married because we had a good night of great marriage. Amen. Never been apart, never been separated. None of that stuff. Never, I never slept uh, on the couch. I don't know where y'all were all at. Never done that. So we felt like we had a responsibility to share with them the wisdom that we had acquired down through the years of making mistakes. Right. And, and, and then, what was that? A whole, what's that, what's that? Seven days or seven weeks? How many things did Pastor Johnny make the people go through? Seven weeks. And we still sing the song, Get the Lord. We still sing songs, not last. They had beautiful weddings. Some of them trained us from here to work home and were standing. And they rolled off in the limousine. Yeah. And it didn't last a year. Right. Two years. Because counseling the mind is not the strength behind marriage. You can counsel the mind, but why counsel something that's subject to change? Yeah. Today you can look good, tomorrow you can, you know, be slouchy and fatty. You know, that's what they say. When they get mad, they call your names and all of that. I know y'all don't know nothing about that, but I'm just telling it like you. If you live in this world that I live in, they talk like that. I'm not attracted to you anymore because you're heavy. And it grieves you, and then you shoot them back down. You ain't all that yourself. Come on, man. Come on. But it's what God does in the spirit. See, your spirit recognizes. Not what a man can tell you because the man, well, I don't know what our counsel was one day, wasn't it? And we had to counsel the one who counseled us. When they threw in the towel on ministry and was losing their mind and ready to leave home and everything. It's the spirit you recognize in the spirit who's connected to you. And I didn't want to make another mistake, so I asked God, I said, God, and I asked everybody that I ever married, I asked them, did God, and many of them tell that lie. God said, that's my wife. I'm going to leave. I want to quit, I want to throw in the towel. Just go on and say you a liar and you were chasing your flesh. Amen. Ain't no such thing talking about you miss God. You were looking for him. I said, Prophet's trying to push me. And I'm close. She tried to push me. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not moving. God told me he gonna speak to me around my birthday. Now how God got to speak to me around my birthday? <laughs> I'm not going to want to. I'm not going to be moved until God speak to me. I've been down this painful road and almost lost my mind. Amen. Contemplating murder. And I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it to me. And God said, Audrey is your wife. And I said, well, you're going to have to confirm that. I ain't heard but one time. I need to hear again. <laughs> he always to staff it. With the two of my witnesses, and he said, You know this, me. I said, Okay, I'm just glad. <laughs> and we went into the